Welcome to Boom Shot, the show where we take a look at film, photography, and the business behind the scenes. I'm your host, Garrett Ray, and today we're taking a look at photography with a focus on headshots and portraiture. Hold on to your butts, here we go. Photography is all about understanding, manipulating, and then capturing light. Today we're going to take a look at three very cheap light modifiers that you can use to improve your images. We're also going to take a look at a couple of different composition and focusing tips so that you can better understand how to direct the eye towards what you want people to see in your images. First, let's talk about one of the bad habits that's been hardest for me to break personally in my photography. Taking pictures at eye level. This is one of those things that's just a habit for us because we've gotten used to pulling our phones out and snapping a picture right in front of our face. The thing about this is that it's not very interesting. Try different angles, get low, get high, put something between your lens and the subject. See what kind of emotion that evokes, how that changes your image. Changing your angle will change more than just the entire composition of your image. It's going to change the look of your subject. For instance, when you're shooting a headshot, if you want to bring more definition to someone's jawline, you should shoot slightly above them and or have them angle their chin down. This brings a lot of definition to their jawline and separates their face from their neck. This makes people look better and they're going to feel better when they see the picture. Speaking of separation, you always want to be looking for ways to separate what you want people to be looking at from the rest of the image. This is where you look for contrast. And contrast can be lights and darks. This is most of the time what people think. Where are my shadows? Where are my highlights? And that's a great thing to look for. But you can also look for contrast in color. Find a background that your subject isn't going to just blend into because they're wearing the same color shirt as whatever's behind them. That contrast will make them stand out and the eye will be drawn to your subject. You can also get separation by shooting with a longer lens and blurring out the background. We've been shooting a lot with the 70 to 200 millimeter L series lens from Canon and it is absolutely amazing. I love the look that it gives me. When you're shooting headshots, you really don't want to shoot below 50 millimeters. The shorter your focal length is, the more you start to get the fisheye warp effect. 85 millimeters is a popular focal length for portraits for this reason. You don't get any distortion, you get a good amount of bokeh in the background, and there's really, really great 85 millimeter prime lenses that you can get specifically for portraits. So a lot of people go that way when they invest in their kit. Here's another bad habit to break. Pushing your lenses past where you actually need to. This is the Canon Nifty 50 1.8 millimeter lens. A lot of people grab this because it's cheap and you can get pretty good images out of it. Here's the thing though, your instincts are going to be to push this all the way to a 1.8 so you can get a really blurry background. But that's actually not the best thing for it because these are not sharpest when they're wide open. No lens is. It's best to take it down to an f3.2 or maybe even an f4. Shoot your images there. You're going to have a less shallow depth of field, but that's going to be better for you in the long run because your whole subject's face will be in focus. It's much easier to nail focus if you stop down just a little bit and give yourself a little bit of breathing room. Speaking of focus, how do you know you're focusing on the right thing? Well, Garrett, it's easy. I just focus on the face. Nah, not quite. You need to be more accurate with your focusing. The eyes are the window to the soul, but in a headshot, it's more like the eyes are the window to knowing if you were paying attention to what you were doing or not. You need to focus on the eye that's closest to the camera. Set your focus point there, make sure that's sharp, and then take your shot. Everything else will be secondary to that. The eyes are going to be what your audience spends the most time looking at in your image. I guarantee it. Last little tip before we move into our DIY builds, pay attention to your headroom. There's nothing worse than taking a picture that has great lighting, a confident smile from your subject, and then just ridiculous amounts of room above their head where you have no idea why that's in the image. I have ruined so many shots because I wasn't paying attention to this in my early career, so it's definitely something that I wanted you to make sure you're aware of. You just need to pay attention. Make sure there's not a whole bunch of space above them so it looks like you're taking a picture of whatever's behind them instead of actually their face. Okay, all of this is well and good. We've got some composition tips on the table, but earlier I mentioned manipulating light. What did I mean by that? Is there some sort of magic to this whole photography thing? Can I bend ways of light to my will like some sort of wizard? Well, sort of. Photographers use lots of little tricks and equipment to change the quality of the light they're shooting in. These are called light modifiers. The big two are called diffusion and bounce. When you're taking pictures of a person, there's nothing less flattering than harsh light. Harsh light gives hard shadows around the eyes, the nose, the neck, and it can make the most beautiful person in the world look really, really ugly because they're sitting there doing this. Anybody seen my grandson? This is why we look for ways to diffuse the light. 
One of my favorite ways to do this is stupid cheap, and you definitely can do this no matter what type of budget you're operating with. A frosted shower curtain between your light source and your subject diffuses the light a lot, and it softens the shadows on their face. All you have to do is pick one of these up at Walmart for like five bucks and then hold it up in front of your subject. Snap the shot and you're good to go. You can even grab multiple of these, tape them together, and get a huge diffuser if you need one. Another great thing about these is that if you don't have an assistant to hold up the shower curtain for you, they've already got holes in the top of the shower curtain. You just push these onto the top of a light stand, leave them up, and you're good to go. Diffuse light is always much more pleasing to look at, and it's going to keep your talent more comfortable because they're not going to have the sun beating down on them, making them look like Grandpa Joe. It's a win-win. There's really no reason not to do this. Next, bounce. Sometimes you just need more light on one side or the other. You can drag a whole bunch of lights around and plug them in, or you can just use the power of the sun and something reflective to get more light. This is something photographers use all the time. Bounce is your best friend, but sometimes it's expensive to get the right bounce stuff. You can buy a five-in-one reflector for about 40 bucks on B&H, but the thing about that is they're not very big. So how do you get more bounce without spending a whole bunch more money? Head down to your local hardware store, buy a four by eight foot section of polystyrene, cut it in half, and bam, you got yourself two giant reflectors. The great thing about this is that you have a white side and a silver side when you buy this stuff. So you can use the white side for closer shots, but if you have a wide shot, you can actually back up and still bounce light from a pretty good distance away. For added sturdiness, you can take the two halves and tape them together. I bought the inch thick stuff because I really just don't want it to break, and then I taped it together for that extra sturdiness. I want these things to be able to take a beating, and so far they're holding up pretty well. Each sheet of this only cost about 16 bucks, and since we're going to use this for both film and photography, it was well worth the pocket change I spent on it. So quick recap, move around, find a different angle, and look for contrast, both in brightness and in color. Use diffuse light. It's better for your talent on set and it's better for your images in the long run. And use a bounce board. It's super easy to fill in shadows and make sure that you can actually see all the detail in someone's face. Finally, focus true on what you want people to look at. Using a general focus point like the box on the LCD screen instead of an actual focus point in the viewfinder on your camera is less accurate and it's less likely to give you the results you want. Focus on exactly what you want people to look at first that's going to give you better results in your images no matter what. Take these tips, use them. I want to see you do better. So send me some of your work and show me what they look like before you use this and then what you look like after. I would love to see the improvements you're making. We'll see you next week here on Boomshot. Hey, thanks for joining us. We love that you're watching our videos. If you're enjoying what we're doing, hit that like button and subscribe. You won't miss a single thing. We don't just do Boomshot here on this channel. We also post our short films, music videos, and excerpts from our podcast, Roll Sound, where we talk about movies, TV shows, and the news. It's a lot of fun, and we would love to have you be a part of more of our videos. So hit that subscribe button, and then watch these. Cool. See you later. Oh, this is just the floor.